Hello, my name is Dr. Omende and I'm going to discuss the autonomic nervous system. I'm using the lecture series by Professor Igbibi. So um, we straight away proceed. So the autonomic nervous system generally controls the smooth muscles and the glands in the body. And we have two neurons that are involved in the autonomic nervous system. You have a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. Now you need to understand what is a ganglion. A ganglion is a collection of neuronal cell bodies outside the central nervous system. So a preganglionic neuron um, relays within a ganglion and postganglionic neuron takes up the information from the preganglionic neuron. So these two neurons are interposed between the CNS and the effector organ. So from the CNS, you have your preganglionic. It synapses with the postganglionic within the ganglion. And then the postganglionic carries information to an effector organ, which could be a smooth muscle um, or a gland. So what are the components of the autonomic nervous system? We have sympathetic system and parasympathetic mainly. Um, but when you read some books, they classify the enteric nervous system as a separate um, component of the autonomic nervous system. This is the um, um, component that controls the gastrointestinal system. So from this image, you can see that you first have um, the nervous system divided into central nervous system with brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system that has cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. And we have this ganglia, which are a collection of neuronal cell bodies outside the central nervous system. So all these are components of the peripheral nervous system. But the same peripheral nervous system entails um, plexuses within the GI, which we call the enteric plexuses, and those are parts of the um, autonomic nervous system. So the um, nervous system can also be divided into the sorry the peripheral nervous system can be divided into somatic and autonomic the somatic portion goes to the skeletal muscle while the autonomic portion innervates the smooth muscles cardiac muscles and the glands and remember we've talked of the enteric where it goes to innervate the smooth muscles and the glands uh, as well as endocrine cells that um, exist within the GI tract so a parasympathetic system originates, uh, we say it has a craniosacral origin. And what does that mean? We have some cranial nerves that have a parasympathetic component. That's the cranial portion. So cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10. That's oculomotor, um, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. And we also have a small um, sacral component that forms the parasympathetic system. So parasympathetic is craniosacral in origin. Then we also have uh, the sympathetic system that is thoracolumbar in origin, whereby the preganglionic fibers will arise from the thoracic, that's T1 to T12, and a few lumbar segments, the um, first two lumbar segments, and these travel through the ventral roots. Then the postganglionic fibers from the thoracolumbar origin, how do they reach the target organ? They can go directly to the target organ, or they may hitchhike on a nearby spinal nerve, or hitchhike on a nearby cranial nerve, or these postganglionic fibers can also form a plexus around the nearest artery. So those are the four ways in which the sympathetic fibers reach the target organs. So what is a um, cranial parasympathetic outflow like? Okay, so we've said that uh, parasympathetic is craniosacral in origin involving cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10. And we have four parasympathetic ganglia that are involved. These are the ciliary ganglion within the eye, the pterygopalatine or sphenopalatine ganglion, the aortic ganglion, and the submandibular ganglion. So these um, um, ganglia are the ones that these four cranial nerves use. So the parasympathetic outflow usually contains the nuclear of origin of these four cranial nerves, the parasympathetic nuclear of origin. Then from the nuclei, we have preganglionic fibers that carry the information to the specific ganglion out of these four, whether it's ciliary, pterygopalatine, otic, or submandibular ganglion. And then from the ganglion, we have the postganglionic fibers that will carry the information to the target organ, which is an effector organ. It could be a gland or a smooth muscle. So really, that's the pathway from um, the central nervous system where you have the nuclei of the cranial nerves. The preganglionic fiber will take the information and relay on a postganglionic fiber within a ganglion either of the four, 
and then the postganglionic fiber will take the information to the effector organ. So what are the features of a ganglion? Okay, so ganglia generally contain cell bodies of postganglionic. Remember we've said preganglionic are relaying onto the cell bodies of postganglionic within the ganglia. Then um, within the ganglia, the preganglionic um, parasympathetic neurons are relaying synaptically onto the cell bodies of postganglionic parasympathetic neurons, and each is closely related topographically to a branch of trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve number five. So you need to remember that this trigeminal nerve, the fibers do not really relay within the ganglia, but the ganglia are closely related to the branches of the nerve. So the ganglia receive postganglionic sympathetic neurons. Again, this postganglionic sympathetic do not synapse within the ganglia. The ganglia um, of these cranial nerves are parasympathetic ganglia. They receive fibers from trigeminal nerve and from postganglionic sympathetic neurons. However, these do not relay or synapse within the ganglia. There's a close association of these branches with the trigeminal nerve. Why? Because these branches of the trigeminal nerve will aid in the distribution of the parasympathetic um, secretomotor fibers in the head and neck region. So for instance, this um, you can see here, you have your autonomic um, from the lateral. Uh, this basically shows um, your preganglionic neuron that's coming to the ganglion to synapse with the postganglionic neuron, and that carries information to your effector organ, which could be smooth muscle or gland. So that's the um, autonomic pathway, OK? So we start with the oculomotor nerve, which um, is the first, the third cranial nerve, and we said it carries the parasympathetic uh, fibers. So the parasympathetic fibers start within the midbrain. Which uh, nuclear of oculomotor nerve is parasympathetic? It's the accessory oculomotor nucleus. We call it the edinger westphal nuclei. So from the nucleus, the preganglionic fibers will be carried within the oculomotor nerve, and then these fibers will enter the ciliary ganglion. So they will use the oculomotor nerve to get to the ciliary ganglion, okay? And then within the ganglion, the preganglionic will synapse with postganglionic. And then the postganglionic will leave the ganglion through the short ciliary nerves. And short ciliary nerve pierces the sclera and goes to innervate the ciliary muscles and the sphincter pupillae muscles. So what is the effect of this short ciliary nerve carrying parasympathetic information to ciliary muscles and sphincter pupillae. It's going to cause the sphincter pupillae muscle to constrict the pupil, okay, and that's responsible for pupillary light reflex, and the ciliary muscle contracting will cause the thickening of the lens. And when the lens thickens, this is able to um, help with accommodation. Remember, accommodation is the changes that occur in the eye um, in respect to near vision, Okay, and the major change is usually the thickening of the lens, and this is enhanced by contraction by the ciliary muscle lens. It's basically through the parasympathetic. So that's the pathway that oculomotor nerve uses. So from edinger westphal nuclei, the preganglionic fiber relays onto the ciliary ganglion, synapses with the postganglionic, which is the short ciliary nerve, innervating the sphincter pupillae, causing constriction of the pupil, and the ciliary muscle causing the um, thickening of the lens. Then we go to um, facial nerve. This is another cranial nerve with parasympathetic component. So which nuclei are involved? The superior salivary and lacrimal nuclei. Those two nuclei are the ones facial nerve will use with parasympathetic information. So this, um, from this um, nuclei, we use the nervous intermediate portion of facial nerve, which will emerge from the brainstem. So this nervous intermediate portion of facial nerve will carry the preganglionic fibers and go and relay into ganglia. They will relay in pterygopalatine ganglion and also in the submandibular ganglion. So we, these are the um, ganglia that facial nerve uses. Remember we've said superior salivary nuclei and lacrimal nuclei. The nervous intermediate is the preganglionic fiber. And then you relay into the ganglia, uh, pterygopalatine ganglia and submandibular ganglia. But we also have some fibers relaying into the um, geniculate ganglia. So within the geniculate ganglia, we have sensory neurons, and in the pterygopalatine ganglia, the preganglionic fibers will relay on postganglionic fibers that will go to the mucosal glands within the lacrim lacrimal gland, the nasal cavity glands, and the mucosal glands within the pharynx. While 
um, relaying into the um, postganglionic fibers within the submandibular ganglia will go and innervate the salivary glands, specifically submandibular and sublingual glands. So this is what we mean from superior salivary um, nucleus, nervous intermediate carries preganglionic fibers that will enter the pterygo um, palatine as well as the submandibular ganglion. So from the pterygopalatine ganglion, postganglionic fibers will innervate the lacrimal glands and the mucosal glands within the nasal cavity and the pharynx, while um, preganglionic fibers to the submandibular ganglion will go to innervate um, the submandibular, the postganglionic fibers will now innervate the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland. So from the submandibular ganglion, preganglionic fibers will um, um, synapse at that region and they will travel in the facial nerve and leave it above the stylomastoid foramen in coda tympani. Remember, coda tympani usually traverses within the tympanic cavity and reaches the lingual nerve, which conveys to the submandibular ganglion. So the postganglionic secretomotor fibers go to the submandibular salivary gland and also the sublingual gland. So this is what we mean. Um, the facial nerve, remember, is going to use the uh, lacrimal nerve and superior salivary nuclei. And then the nervous intermediates is what will carry um, the facial, this, this is where the nuclei are. So facial nerve will exit through, exit the skull through the internal acoustic meatus, then enters into the, the, the middle ear. Then remember, it's going to give branches the greater petrosol. It will give a nerve to stapedius and coda tympani nerve. Yeah. And then it's through the coda tympani that the preganglionic fibers will hitchhike to get to the submandibular gland. So if you follow this coda tympani, you can see that you have some secretomotor fibers, which are postganglionic fibers from the submandibular ganglion, hitchhiking on the coda tympani to get to the submandibular gland, and some from the submandibular ganglion get to the, to the sublingual gland. Then, um, From the pterygopalatine ganglion, what happens? So we have preganglionic fibers that will um, come to the pterygopalatine ganglion. These ones usually arise from the lacrimal nuclei. Now, <coughs> the, from the lacrimal nuclei, the fibers will be carried by nervous intermediates through facial nerve, and then facial nerve will give greater petrosol nerve. Greater petrosol nerve will be joined by deep petrosol nerve from the carotid plexus, which are carrying um, sympathetic, and these two will form nerve to pterygoid canal. So if you go back to this image, you can see the from the facial nerve, you have your greater petrosol nerve. It's joined by deep petrosol nerve, which are the plexus around the internal carotid. <coughs> so greater petrosol nerve and deep petrosol nerve together form the nerve to pterygoid canal. And this nerve to pterygoid canal goes to the pterygopalatine ganglion. And it's from here that you will innervate the lacrimal glands and the mucosal glands within the nasal cavity. So from the um, this um, preganglionic fibers that have entered the pterygoid ganglion, <coughs> they will um, synapse with postganglionic fibers that will get to the lacrimal gland through the zygomatic branch of um, second division of uh, uh, trigeminal, which is the maxillary. And then postganglionic fibers also reach the mucosa of the nose and the palate through the nasopalatine and palatine branches of maxillary division of trigeminal. So what are the functions? These parasympathetic fibers will stimulate salivary secretion and vasodilatation, and also secretomotor to lacrimal and mucosal glands of the nose and the palate to increase their secretions. So um, in the next video, we'll discuss the glossopharyngeal nerve and its um, involvement in the parasympathetic system. Thank you.